We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name, Lord. We worship your name. We worship your name. Oh
Today, the family and the church, the friends and loved ones, say thank you. We want to say thank you because we are still here. We say thank you because your daughter, Kimmy, is still here. We say thank you because the children are still here. We want to say thank you because the church is still here. The Christ divine church is still here. And that is why we want to say thank you. That volume of our faith was shaken. In spite of that, Lord, you kept us in you. We are not just alive, Almighty God, but we are alive in you. And that is why we say thank you. We say thank you, Almighty God, because we know that neither death no life, no principalities, no angels, no powers, no things present, no things to come. We are persuaded that none of this shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That is why. you to know that we have reasons to thank you. We have reasons to say our God is a good God. Because through this, in a time of grief, in a time of need, we have found a friend in you. But what a friend we have in Jesus. In a time of grief, Pastor Kemi have found she has found a husband to the widow. Lord, in this time of grief, the children have found a friend, a father to the fatherless. And that is why we want to say thank you. In this time of grief, the church has found a great comforter. Yeah, yeah. We say thank you. But Lord, more than this, we want to thank you. You are the unchanging changer. You are the miracle working God. You are the great I am that I am. Something tells me you are ageless. The God who has no beginning and no ending. The God who knows the end from the beginning. In yesterday, today, and forever, you remain the same. We want to say thank you. For though he's departed, we know that there is no death in Christ.
and the legacy of hope he gave remains with you and I. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Trish. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Trish. Um, we shall now be taking our first Bible reading, and that will be done by Brother Ayonide Abidoku. Brother Ayonide Abidoku. Church. Um, I'd like to give my Bible reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless his word. Thank you, brother Ayori de Abidogun. Um, our departed daddy was known for so many things. So many things, too numerous, you know, to mention. But, um, Somebody would try and just, uh, you know, render a few memories of Dr. Kenny Abidogun. And uh, so uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Abiola Okbeud. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, on behalf of my mom, uh, my brothers, and myself, I just want to thank everyone for your support and your help through everything. Um, I'll just say, my family didn't expect things to end like this, but I thank God for everyone, and everyone that has held us, that has supported us, that has enabled us to stand through this time, because it's been very difficult. Um, and as I said, we weren't expecting it, so I just want to thank God for everyone's lives. Uh, that are here, um, and even those that can't make it today, thank you so much for your for your presence here today, for your love, your support, your prayers, your texts, your calls, even though sometimes we don't answer, sometimes we don't call you back. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, I have to talk about my dad. Um, so, I'm sure everyone knows that my dad was a brilliant man. He was smart. He was, well, even some things I didn't even know about him before um, became very evident um, when everyone had to say nice things about him. But one of the things that stood out amongst all of them was his impact in people's lives and even the legacy that he's left, which still goes on even up to now, in terms of the lives that he touched and the people he helped, the compassion he showed to other people, the love, the selflessness, everything about that. I know that even though, you know, we're his biological children, I know that there are so many other people that would call themselves, that would call my, my dad their dad because of how loving he was for them. And I know that uh, he will definitely hold a special place in many, many, many people's lives. And um, so I thank you, I thank God for, for that. And I thank God for the fact that um, we can actually call him dad, I guess. Um, so memories, um, with, with regards to memories, um, I guess things that are evidently, um, that stay in my mind is the fact that he loved us and he loved his, uh, my mum, his wife, and he loved everything, everyone that he, that he touched. He did everything through actual love and genuine love, not because he was being forced to, because it looked good or because that's the way it appeared. 
he did everything because he actually genuinely felt love for for for, for people. And even I can remember, as, you know, being really little. And um, at the time, I was studying for my 11 plus. A lot of children here are like 11 plus. Um, <laughs> it's um, what we had to take uh, in between. Uh, I think uh, primary school and secondary school, if you wanted to go to the grammar school. And I can remember I was well trying to do that. And uh, my dad would, every single night, he would, Abby, okay, it's time for us to read. And there would even be times when I would answer a question and he would tell me, no, Abby, that's wrong. And I will say, no, but Daddy, I think it's right. And he'd be like, no, it's wrong. And I'd be like, but Dad, I think it's right. And then he'd be like, oh, oh, right, okay, yeah, you're actually right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even with my brother, uh, bless him, um, he's always encouraged them to be the best that they can be. Um, I all play the piano now, not because he wanted to at first, but let's just say he grew to love such a skill uh, through encouragement. Um, and now he plays the piano really, really well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is my dad always um, saw the best in people. And even if you didn't necessarily, um, that wasn't how you appeared to be, that is what he saw in you. And he wanted to always get it out of you because he knew that you, knew that you could. And even with us, with all the other people he's met, he's done the same thing in their lives. And I know that they thank God for his life, um, which, is, which is definitely a blessing. Um, one of the other things my dad loved was uh, mu music um, and the choir and things like that. Um, I remember my mummy, we have so many instruments at home. We, we don't play them. <laughs> yeah. uh, but my dad um, endeavoured. Um, we have a saxophone, we have a piano, we have the, is it the Nigerian drums, the guitar? <laughs> the, no, no, it's the bongo, the bongo ones. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, they be, and they're all just in the sitting room at the back. And then my dad would just, okay, today's the day I'm going to play them. And he would spend hours on the piano and on the saxophone and on the bongo drums and the guitar and then he'll put Ayo to come and play the piano and Ayo would say reluctantly but he'd go and um, yes my dad absolutely loved music um, and he spent so many times uh, coming down for choir practice even if it was just him even if it was just him and another member of the choir he would have choir practice with them and um, you know he spent his time and energy and time and money and petrol because we live in Bolton not in Manchester and he would come every single week and he would spend his time because that's what he loved to do that's what he wanted to do um, so so I thank God for for all of the love that he put in him um, I would I, I would actually ask the choir if we can sing one song together I haven't led the worship in ages <laughs> Pardon? If you would have mind, yeah. But I just thank God uh, for my dad's life, and I thank God that the life that he lived, and I thank God for the legacy that he leaves. And even though every single day, every single day, it hurts me that he's not here, I know that where he is, he is in a better place. And where he is, he can see us. He, he just unfortunately can't communicate, but you know, that's the way God's made it. And um, I thank God for the life that he gave and has and has now for us. So, um, thank you all for listening. Um, I'll sing one, well, we'll sing one song. He used to love this song. Um, sorry, Charles, I know it's been a while. Um, <coughs> oh, Jesus, precious Jesus.
quiet and still remain because um, you will be doing something now. But before as for, um, we go into the second hymn, um, like I said before, I called Dr. Abiola um, to the podium. I said, there are so many things that we can say about our departed daddy. Uh, too numerous, too numerous to mention. If you want to keep on mentioning things, this afternoon we won't leave here. Um, but on behalf of Christ Divine Church, um, I just like to say a few things about our departed daddy. Yeah, and uh, for every one of us here who happens to be a member of this church, you will confirm what I'm about to say about him. Um, our daddy was, um, although he was the head of the church, but he, he wasn't a boss. He didn't live his life like most bosses, you know, would normally live their lives. He was a leader. Dr. Abidogun was leadership exemplified. He never gave instructions. If you had anything in mind, you went for it. And so you, as a follower, you will have no reason to remain seated where he was. Because he will get up and go and fix the thing himself. Rather than just sitting down there, you know, relaxing and be passing instructions, he will be the first to attempt to do that thing. And that's like, you know, something that uh, somebody like me, yeah, every time I just look at him like that, I was just like, can I ever be like this man? You know, that was something that I really wanted to emulate about him. The way he carried himself with charisma, energy, and you know, everything. And another thing, another quality that he had as a leader is the ability to recognize your strengths. Like everybody else, we all have our weaknesses. He knows every individual's weakness, and at the same time, or rather, he knew every individual's weakness, and at the same time, he recognized the strengths of such individuals. Because we used to talk a lot, 11, 30, 12 minutes sometimes we were on the phone talking, and we'll be, we'll be telling me things about, you know, individuals complaining about somebody, he will recognize the fact that that person has some great qualities elsewhere. So that's, that's a leader. That's a leader. That's how you know a leader. And again, uh, Reverend Abidogu, he was a helper. Always willing to help. I've never seen such a person. Now, let me just give you some instances. This was a man that if you are passing through issues and you didn't want to tell him because he didn't want to disturb you, if he later got to know, he would be so annoyed. And he would say, but that's why, why we are here. We are there for you. They would say, but, but pastor, you are a human being too. You are a human being too. And we want you to realize. He said, no, 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 no. Then why are we here? Why are we here? If you can't call upon, you know, seek for help. If you cannot help, we'll tell you we cannot help. And then we will find a solution. You know, so he was such a man. And you know, every time you knock on somebody's door, it does not mean that you will get, always get what you want. But the way the person will approach you, the way the person will welcome you, sometimes can suit your mind and then give you all the satisfaction that you actually need. He was such a man. And of course, another thing that everybody here will testify to was his passion. His passion for the things of the Lord. His energy. I was always just worried, but I said it to him many times that I honestly, I don't know how you cope with your job as a medical doctor, how tedious the job will be. Sometimes he will come back to you, come to the church and will say, I've been in the theater for the past eight hours. And because we had a program here, Pastor Kenny will be here. And you will see it all over him, tired. That was enough reason for him to just say, well, I mean, I'm the leader. Who, who can question me? Nobody can question me. He was doing all these things for God. And oftentimes I just ask myself, you know, that when I'm gone, what will people be saying about me? And every time I remember him, 
I just want to tap into all those positivities that he left behind, all the lives that he touched with the kind of, you know, the, the passion, with the kind of um, love that he showed to everybody. And of course, I know that a time is coming uh, on this occasion that we will listen to, to some words of wisdom from our elders, from our pastors, but I will simply say that what we are witnessing today should just challenge us, should challenge all of us, should let us remember the fact that one day we too will be no more. And what will people say after you have gone? God bless us. So we will now be singing in number two, Amazing Grace.
because this is usually the time I go for my medical mission. Uh, when she mentioned it, my heart sank. I may not be able to make this meeting. But when she talked about the date, I said, yeah, I'll be, I'll be here. Because I'll be back into the country just a few days before this meeting. So I'm very grateful for uh, inviting me for this meeting. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to first of all, apart from, I want to thank all pastors that are here for coming around for this uh, special meeting. God bless you real good. Uh, the elders of the church, the pastors of the church, uh, deacons and deaconesses, elders, and indeed the entire church. Again, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and speak today. Uh, it's a honor, and I don't want to take it lightly. Uh, Pastor Dr. Reverend Kenny Abidogo was a very good friend of mine when we were classmates in the medical school. We entered the same year and we finished. Uh, one of our classmates is here, Maya. Uh, we grew up together in the formative days of ours in the medical school. And so I've known, we've, known to, we've known each other for, for a while, even before the ministry started. But there's something that is unique about uh, Ken. I call him Ken. Please pardon me. I'm not, uh, that's what I call him when I see him. When we talk, he called, he called me Babada. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Kenny. Uh, Kenny is unique. There are no two Kenny's that I know. It's unique. But there's one thing that actually stands out in Kenny, and that is his love in bringing out the best in another human being. Particularly when you think you are at the lower head of whatsoever you are struggling with. There's a way it comes around with words and encouragement that will not let you go until you are achieved. Praise the Lord. So, it's a honor for me to, uh, to speak a few words to you about this. But before we speak some few words about them which the Lord puts in my heart to share with uh, Pastor Kenny, the elders of the church, and the whole church thing as a whole. Uh, I just want my wife to come and then pray before I go into the world. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, because where there is confusion, it means there will be peace because of your word. Father, where, where there is torment, where there is anything that is negative, your word can strengthen it in the name of Jesus. I pray that, Lord God, you will help our hearts to receive your words. Father, where there is doubt, let faith arise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
where there is confusion, let there, let there be direction in the name of Jesus. Father Lord God, because we know your love over us, your love, your banner over us is love. And you really, really love us. That's why we know the truth. And you say, when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Father, let there be freedom here in the name of Jesus. For anybody that is bound, Father, we let them loose in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, even as your word sharpen us, Lord, will we indeed sharpen ourselves in the name of Jesus. Because we know when we hear your word, we will never be the same. Father, Lord, I pray that you will remove stony hearts from us in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace through your words. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the joy that comes when we know the truth. Father, we thank you, Lord. And even for the bearer of the world who is going to share your word. Father, I pray that, Lord God, you will organize him through your Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, that which you have given to him, that, Lord, there will not be any inhibition from releasing his word, the word of God towards us. In the name of Jesus, we pray that, Lord God, you will be the number one as the word comes true. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for loving us, for giving us the Holy Bible. We thank you, Lord. We don't take this opportunity for granted. There are places, there are countries that they cannot even gather and even open your word. We are privileged people. The word of God indeed is powerful. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've been given 20 minutes, almost 10 minutes of the spend, and we do not want to go beyond that. Uh, when uh, Pastor Kelly told me I would use the word before I went on a medical mission, I sought the face of the Lord. I asked the Lord, what would you want to pass across to your people? And the Lord divided the church into three categories. One, the head, as the head. Then, the committee <coughs> of pastors that were dedicated some time ago, I think about two or three months ago. Together with some elders, deacons, and deaconesses, form another group. And then the third group is all members of the church as a whole. And the Lord said I should get his word across to the body first before going into uh, opening and sharing what I. Because in the midst of sharing what I want to share, we might lose uh, the substance of the message of the Lord to the church as a whole. So I'm going to share that with you before I uh, open the scripture. If there is no time for me to actually go into preaching the word, I would say the word of the Lord. Divide it unto you as the Lord said I should do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the word to you as the head of uh, the ministry now is the Lord said, Pray me, my servant has come to be with you. Now, the mantle is from you to carry on the foundation that the two of you have laid together. The Lord says, I should say to you, that you are well able and abundantly able to carry on and take his people to the place of their destiny. 
you are well able, abundantly able to do it. He says, the resources to get you to do this is already available unto you. He says, don't limit your imagination of that which he has put in your hands to do. Particularly with regards to finances. The Lord said, let your imagination run wild. He is abundantly able to meet and fulfill that which he put in your mind to imagine for him to do for the ministry. Only be courageous. Be courageous and the scripture should never depart from your mouth. The truth, nothing but the truth. The truth is what will set the people free. Not eloquence. Okay? And again, the Lord say again to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. I am your strength. I am your source of provision. Look not unto man. I will fulfill that which you and my son have put together as that which you want to do for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's the word for you. The word for the committee of the uh, pastors, elders, and so on, the middle, the, the second group. The word of the Lord unto you is this unity. The Lord says He's going to drop ideas of how to move the ministry forward into the two different people in that group. But He said, one thing that is crucial is unity and recognizing the authority that is above the pastor. He said you will cross fertilize the ideas you have and with unity again there's nothing you imagine to do that will be possible unto you. And one thing the Lord says again concerning the group is your family altar. Your family altar needs to be impeccable. So that is the instruction. The anointing will flow, revelation knowledge of how to move the ministry forward will come through as your family altar remains holy and intact. That is crucial. Okay? Let's say again, there should be no strange fire kindled on your family altar. Then to the church, the, the, this is the time to arise and build. That is the word of the Lord to you. The whole the church, all the members. This is not a time to sit on the face. This is a time to arise and build. And God said, a time as you arise together to build. A time is coming in which, during which you will no longer run onto your pastor for specific solutions. The Holy Spirit through his ministry will cause you to begin to drink of this cup of your pastor that when situations, circumstances arises that you would otherwise run to your pastor for 
the Holy Spirit will cause you to stand because you are drawn out of the cup, the same cup, to stand and take your ground and you will see results instantly. This will filter through the, earth, the older people, even on to uh, the children. Praise the Lord. So it is time to arise and to build. It's time to arise and to build. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The scripture says, Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed above with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sits down at the right hand of the throne of God. What I want to talk about is not the whole, we can do a Bible study on this scripture. But I want you to look at the, 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 first, the first bit of that uh, chapter, uh, verse 1. He sort of so great a cloud of witness. Now the question that comes to mind is, uh, what is Kenny doing there? He's William Madidor. He's part of a great cloud of witness. And what are these? What are they doing? What they doing is encouraging us that are still in the race. Don't give up. Carry on. I can see him standing there, looking down and saying, Yes, Kenny, you are well able. Carry on. Seeing the elders, carry on. Don't give up. You are well able. You are well equipped to do this. You understand me? They're encouraging us over there and saying, Yes, carry on the good fight of faith. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Psalm 110, verse 3, the scripture talks about the people. It says, uh, The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So, Scripture says, in the day of the manifestation of the power of God, the people shall be willing. Another scripture talks in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, it says, if ye are willing and obedient, ye shall eat of the good of the land. Again, I want to say to every member of this church, and to everyone present here today, the the word of the Lord to us is let there be a willingness in our heart to carry on. With a willingness in your heart to carry on, you will eat the good of the land. Pastors, you will eat the good of the land. Forget about Brexit, Brexit and all the trouble that everybody is afraid of. The economy Finances and so on. That is human knowledge. But for those of us in the household of faith, the secret to surviving of such a time as this is that there are a willingness in the depth of your heart to do the will of God. There will be manifestations. 
manifestation of his power as we determine willingly to do the will of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even the babies are bearing me with it. What else do we want? God bless you. Now let me come back something because my time is long. I will not take more than uh, the time I've been given. Are you keeping the time? I knew you were not keeping it. So. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just want to share one more scriptures. And then that is it. And then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 20. In fact, I will encourage everybody to read Nehemiah, the story of Nehemiah, the whole book. You will see how God is so faithful when we decide to do His will and to finish it. The scripture talks about Jesus Christ. He said, My desire is to do the will of God and to do what? To finish it. Nehemiah, please go and get home, reach the whole of the book. There's something that was that I that's, that I just want to share here in uh, this in this passage. The story of Nehemiah is a story of somebody determined of seeing the glory of the house of God or the world, Jerusalem, and so on, and how it that glory was really great. And he was, I mean, he came and took them in exile and so on. And he turned out the gates of Jerusalem, the wall, and broke it down. But Jeremiah, Nehemiah was in a very, very comfortable position in the state land. He was a copier to the king. But he never forgot. Something that 
was crucial. When he got into the land, the secret to rebuilding the wall of Brazil was because the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah chapter 20, chapter 2, verse 20. Then answered I then and said unto, unto, the, unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. That's the challenge. Will you arise and build? Yes. We, his servants, will arise and build. This is the time to arise. The provision for the building is available. God is making available. All you need is to be willing and arise and it will be and build. But ye have no portion, no right, no moral. In Jerusalem, well, that is if you if you refuse to arise to build. We were talking about Sambalat and Tobias and those that gathered themselves together. For those who know the history, please read this book. It's good. Nehemiah 4 8. So build us the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to be. Let us pray. The people had a mind to be. I don't know which of this sharing is taught to you as an individual, as a minister. Us to talk to the Lord. Just talk to the Lord the way the Lord has ministered to you. Two minutes. Oh, just one minute. Just talk to the Lord. This is the time for the body of Christ here. This is the time to arise to be. It's not the time to be sitting on the things. There's greater blessing that will come on you as you arise to be. It's not the time to sit on the fence. It is time to get busy. <laughs> because the anointing of the law will be made manifest and tangible in this ministry like never before. It's not my word. It is the word of the law. Hallelujah. And for adventure, you are here today. And you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. We heard of the testimony and the legacy pastor Kelly left behind as a child of God. He's there seated in the bosom of the Almighty God. His earnest desire for you, if you're seated here tonight and you have not given your life to Christ, his honest desire, and indeed the desire of the Almighty God, is don't walk out of this building tonight without giving your life to Jesus Christ. So I'm going to give you an opportunity with all eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you are in this hall today, tonight, and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm not going to ask you to do something extraordinary. All you need to do for me is just take your hand up, I'll recognize it, and then we'll take it from there. Is there anybody in the hall today that will want to give his or her life to the Lord Jesus Christ? All you need to do, with all eyes closed, all heads bowed, just take your hand up for me to see, and that is it. Is there anybody in the hall tonight? I guess, uh, thank you for that hand. God bless you real good. I'll speak to you later. Hallelujah. Any more, any more. This is the hour. <coughs> this is the time to change your destiny for, for good. Thank you for that hand. Any other hands? With all hands.
is found there, and all eyes closed. This is the time. Anyone? Okay, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to bless you. We want to thank you for that hand, Lord God Almighty. I ask, Lord, that you will minister your peace into that hand of that fellow that has raised you and hands unto you. Holy Ghost, do your work. Do that which you know best to do than the eloquence of man in our heart and voice. Heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We commit to this family, this church, Pastor Kenny, the children, the elders, and indeed the church as a whole into your hands. But I you said you will build your church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. We stand as ministers, all of us that are ministers here, we stand together for the fulfillment of this scripture in this ministry tonight in the name of Jesus. We take them back into the gates of hell. We summon heavens we speak unto you. We say, listen, the scripture says we shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto us. God is not a man that should lie, nor the son of man that should repent. When he says a thing, the scripture makes it clear. He makes it good. And so, as a body of Christ, we take the battle to the gates of hell. And we say, concerning this ministry, you are failed. Amen. Glory unto glory. Glory unto glory. Amen. One manifestation of the power of God Amen. in this ministry. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm sure I've gone beyond 30 minutes. Please pardon me. I'll give the Lord a better round of applause. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your ministry. Um, we should be doing the vote of hands now. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to spend the next uh, two minutes because I know that um, as we all stand here, I'm very sure that some people, or many people are thinking, uh, what can I do to assist the work of God in this church? Um, in what way can I be of help? So we don't want to deny such people the opportunity to give unto the Lord if they so wish. So the ushers will come around now and if you just raise up your hand, if you an envelope, and then, you know, if God lays it on your heart um, to, to give something unto the Lord. Can you come to the front, please, that they see you here. Anybody, anybody, I raise up hand, yeah? God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. It's not compulsory, but it's important to um, assist in the work of God in this ministry. God bless you. Please go around and uh, collect the offerings, please.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for this offering. We thank you for what you have used your children to do in this church, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you will bless every pocket that has given unto you this evening, the mighty name of Jesus. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus that your pockets will not run dry in the mighty name of Jesus. And this offering shall be used, O oh Lord, to win more souls into your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Yeah, we are on time and uh, we are uh, moving towards the end of the program. And so I would like to invite um, our mommy, Pastor Kemi Abidoku, to give the vote of thanks. Pastor Kemi, please. Thank you, Pastor Pala. Good afternoon. Thank you all so much for being here. Ah, I'm overwhelmed today. You know, when you have a feeling of um, completion, I have that sense of completion. And I could feel like heaven is glad, God is glad, God is happy, Pastor Kenny is happy. And I have complete, absolute peace. It's been a journey, an unusual journey for one year. One that um, we never planned for, we never hoped for, but just came suddenly. And uh, even though as believers we know where he has gone, but we still had to go through that process of grieving. And the deeper the love, the deeper the grief. And it's been a really tough one. We've hit the ground, but even when we're on the ground, God was with us. Said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he lifted us up again. And I'm very glad to say that today in the church, we are able to talk about what it means to lose a loved one. Because usually we talk about it in terms of where the loved ones are gone, but not how we, those that are left behind, have been able to survive it and what we've gone through. And for me, it was an eye opener because some people were even weeping about people they've lost as far back as 10 years ago. It shows how deep the love goes. Love never dies, does it? Amen? God is love. So when I thank God today, because for those of you that are here, because she shows that Pastor Kenny had good friends. I had good friends. And um, one thing that surprised me is that as we're planning for this remembrance service, I got a surprise call from the hospital where he worked, that they too planned a, a memorial service for him. So they had that this Friday. And I went, and uh, some of the children and some of the church members we went there, and it was beautiful. Because they also had this memorial seat, like a marble seat that they, they designed for him. That thing was so heavy, it took a lot of men to carry it. And um, it was going to be installed in the um, customer garden. And the service was just about 20 minutes long. But I was surprised about the number of people that turned up. And um, now I'll tell you something. I know that there are some group of Kenny's colleagues, women that call themselves his um, wives at work. <laughs> that was it. I learned this many years ago. <laughs> when uh, I went to have lunch with him in hospital, and um, they took me through the watch, introduced me to some of them, and one, two of them called me to one side. I said, we really like you, but we just want you to know where his wife's at work. <laughs> I just thought, well, it's good I'm a believer. <laughs> so I know my husband very well. <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> so that was fun. I met all of them again today. Quite a lot. But the funny thing is they've grown in number. And not only did I meet the, the group of wives, now some, some came to me, a group of younger women, and said, oh, Mrs. Amido, we just want you to know where are Kenny's chicks. <laughs> and I said, what kind of competition is there? <laughs> It was fun. It was great. But it just shows how much they love him. And they said to me, oh, we make sure he has tea, you know, we make sure we look out for him because he's such a hard-working man. From morning till evening, he's just going all over the hospital. So we make sure we are resting, make him sit down and have a cup of tea or a cake and things like that. I said, well, he's good. It just shows how much he's a lovely man. So I just want to say um, 
I'm glad Ken is in heaven and um, he's doing well. He's also looking at us at this moment. There have been times when I've felt his presence, even in our church here. And um, in the last one year, the Lord has not made us um, mourn without, you know, as the Apostle, as Apostle Paul said, um, he wants them to know that as people, as believers, they should not mourn like those who do not know God. We did not mourn like that, but rather it's been a productive one year. Yes, in the, in the sense of this one year, a lot has been achieved, even in Christ divine, and um, the Lord has moved us forward. But this is to remember our leader, our dad, our father, our friend, as we all love to know him, that um, the love continues, but the church as a body, we are moving forward. And I hope indeed all our friends, please, we are moving forward. So let there be no more regrets, no more sorrow, um, no more sadness, no more pain. Um, somebody rang me when we, um, I did the, um, the kind of invitation and I sent it out. The person rang me and the person was crying on the phone. I said, I never knew. I just knew today when I saw this, what you put on the, on the um, Facebook. And I'm like, we're gone. And you're gone. And today you are just crying and she couldn't believe it. Because he said the last time he saw Kenny was two years ago, so I had to console him. I said, Look, we've gone past this. So I'm sorry you are going through it now, but please be healed today. It is well. So please, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being with us on this journey. This is how you know good friends, because it's not only when things are good that they're around, but when things are not so good as well, they're there. My prayer is that the days will be long, separated from one another. I believe that year 27 was like a year of reaping. There were so many pastors that passed away. In Manchester and beyond, in fact, all over the world, we heard of so many pastors. But the Lord just took so many of his servants home. But I pray that as the Lord has even brought more pastors into the kingdom, there will, it will be another 50 years or more that we hear of such so many living at once. Because we all felt it. It was like the elephant was treading the grass in that year, 2017. But we thank God that thank God that the same Lord has comforted us. So we stand strengthened in that comfort, in His love, that we know where our beloved departed ones have gone to, and the Church of God is marching up. Shall we rise up? Glory be to God. Thank you for being here today. We really love you, Pastor. Thank you so much, sir. You're always there whenever I call on you. My, dad, my dear pastors all over, Pastor Mzad, thank you so much. Pastor Adibun, thank you so much. My prophet, thank you, sir. And my sister, my friend, Pastor, Pastor Mika, God bless you. I look to my right, I look to my left, I see pastors all over the room, and dear friends. Um, Lucy's mom, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. We are comrades in this, and God has been with us. And all the members of Christ Divine, thank you so much. And um, it's time for us to go. Do we have the closing in? Okay. Should we just bow our heads for praise? I forgot who's going to ask. Father, we bless you. Precious Father, we lift up your name. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. The immortal God. The mighty creator of heaven and earth. The whole universe and all that is there. Whether it's high above, whether it's below, whether it's in the water, whether it's in the sea, the wilderness. Daddy, you made it all. And above all, you now created us human beings. Everything that you created, the word of God says you spoke and they were created. But when it came to human beings, the word of God says, you said it is good for you to make men in your image and in your likeness. And you created the man and you breathed your breath of life into man. So that means we were made differently. We were made special. To be children unto you, to be creation, to worship you. And not today, no matter what we go through, we're happy to say that we know that we belong to you. So 
So as we have come together today to honor you and thank you for the life of our dearly beloved Kenny, Pastor Kenny. We also thank you that for this one year you have kept us alive to see this day. So Lord, we commit our lives into your hands. Thank you that you live in us. It is you that will in us to do according to your good pleasure. Thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for keeping our children alive. Thank you for keeping our destiny alive. Thank you for keeping our hopes alive. Thank you for keeping your church all over the world alive and strong. We know today that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. Because whether in life or in death, we live for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory, Lord. We are not afraid. Behold, you have conquered the world for us. No well, matter what is happening on this earth, we have the comfort, comfort that Christ has overcome the world. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So today we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We give you the thanks for many more years that we live on earth. Thank you, Lord, that we see our children's children. When we see them get married. When we see them become even prime ministers of this nation. Amen. When we see them become consultants and, and, and medical doctors. Amen. Heavenly Lord. Like pillars in the church of God. They will bury us. We will not bury any of our children in Jesus' name. Amen. That we will decline that by the power in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not reap from us. Amen. He will not gain from us. Amen. Because all we are belongs to you, Lord. And we take glory in you. We take delight in you. So, Abba Father, on this day, we say love, joy, and peace forever. May he continue. May he continue. May he keep on growing from level to level. May we keep on prospering in the name of Jesus. Because, Abba Father, we know that you take delight in the prosperity of your people. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the Lord. Daddy, we thank you so much. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. And good night. And can we have the last hymn?
years of work together. Well, before we do that, I'd just like to call um, the, is it the lady or the person that raised up their hands to receive? Okay, okay, Pastor, we see her. Then, um, Pastor John, if you could minister to that person afterwards. Um, thank you. Can we please say the grace of the Lord together? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now we have a custom in Christ divine, and this is our banner. I hope you don't mind if you share it with us today as we go. And that is to say that um, love, joy, and peace. That is the banner Christ gave to Christ divine. There will be love, joy, and peace forever. Please, can you look at your neighbor and prophesy into their lives that there will be love, joy, and peace forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Oh, you should have come, man. Eh? Oh, I know, but sometimes you end. 